Hey, Rob, it's good to see you again. Hey, likewise, Jim. How's everything? Everything's good. Everything's good. So today I wanted to ask you a few questions about, um, I think you know quite a bit about the topic, lithium ion batteries. Just about mm -hmm. everything we use today uses batteries from games and equipment to power tools. And I guess they even have battery, lithium battery powered, um, you know, bigger things like lawnmowers and stuff like that, or yeah. weed whackers, all of that stuff. So if you're going to move internationally and you want to take your equipment with you, then what do you have to be aware of? What's what's legal and what's not? Does it depend on the country you're moving to, or is it just basically the same in, let's say, Europe, all of Europe, or all of North America or Central America? How does that work? Yeah, so it's, it's a really good question. And, and I think we talked about it just a little bit before, but it's a really good subject. First of all, country doesn't matter so much in my experience at all. It is what is allowed on the carrier. So whether it's so now let's differentiate between ocean and air, depending how it's being done. So for ocean, the typical rule of thumb is lithium ion batteries are allowed, no problem. For like hand tools, weed whackers, even a lawnmower, up yeah. to a certain amp hour, so a certain capacity. I mean, if you get something gigantic, that's we'll have to talk about that. Um, and sometimes they have to be depleted down to 30% or less. It's always a good idea to do that when you're shipping internationally ocean, but they should be inserted into the appliance for which they're designed. So if I've got a power drill, <coughs> I'm gonna have it in power drill. And if I have the power, no, likewise. Beyond that, spare batteries are a little bit tricky. I mean, they're not tricky. It, it depends on the number of spare batteries. I was just dealing with someone the other day and he's, you know, real handy. He has been his whole life. He's moving to wherever. And he's got all these tools, all these tools. I said, no problem. Put the battery in the appliance. He said, well, I have a hundred, about a hundred spare batteries. Hmm. I said, hmm. That's quite a few. So uh, <laughs> basically we just have to understand that and make sure that we're doing the right thing. So, that, you know, sometimes there's a limit on how much you could take because now you've got you know, a real situation there. The third piece on the ocean is lithium ion batteries that are in a conveyance. So an electric bike, things like that. Things that are electric, but they also are motorized and they're using lithium ion. Again, it's perfectly fine. Perfectly fine, we do it all the time. Batteries should be in, in the conveyance. Very often, again, let's drain it below 30%, but we just have to disclose that. You know, we definitely don't. Nobody, nobody checks for that, do they? Actually, is it thirty percent or lower? Does anyone check for anything? But yeah. we're we're gonna we're gonna disclose everything. We're not gonna hide anything because yeah. the, the 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 penalty's too high. The juice just isn't mm -hmm. worth the squeeze on. And why you know why would you try to hide you know an electric bike? You know, yeah. we just need to, we need to know about it, and we need to disclose it on the form so that when it comes you know it's on the boat, everyone knows. No one's no one's been doing anything funny. Yeah. Then. Second category, of course, is air. Air is totally different. Well, it's touchier. So I just, I'm sorry, hold on. <coughs> A little cough here. For air shipments, and I just did one the other day um, with lithium ion batteries. So moving really high end um, stuff like computer stuff with lithium ion batteries by way of air. And, you know, the client said, oh, yeah, yeah, everything. I said, just make sure the batteries are in the appliance or not. How many, you know, look at the box. How many watt hours are they? How many amp mm -hmm. hours? So we understand that these are small batteries and we're going to classify them a certain way. And that was it. Well, what we didn't know was that in addition to the, those batteries that were in the appliance, this client was bringing a whole bunch of spare batteries. And that's a whole different thing on an airline. And I say a whole bunch, not a hundred, you know, but even one would be a spare battery classified, yeah. complete, classified completely differently. Not the same as the one with the unit. Yeah. So that can, that can create troubles. And sometimes you can't even ship the spare batteries. You just can't do oh, it. that's interesting. I yeah. mean, I, I know when, you, when you're on a plane and they say, you know, turn off your phones and your devices, 
What's the technical reason for that? Interference with communications? Suppose it's, it's interference with communications. I don't think it's ever been proven to ever happen under any circumstance. But in theory, it could. And so yeah. run off your phones and all, all that. But it's not from the battery. It's just from, you know, yeah. the whatever signals. But for the, for the batteries, lithium ion batteries on the plane, it, that's a little touch here. Really got to disclose everything. And you know, spare batteries are not. No, for some reason, usually people use air freight, right? Because of uh, to expedite the shipment, everything's faster. Suppose you have your spare batteries denied at that entry point. What are your options from there? Well, it wouldn't be denied at the entry point, typically. It would be denied to get onto the airplane. You oh, know. that's what I meant, like to get onto the airplane by the entry point. So, so come get yeah, it. I see. Is there, now I've heard of electric cars catching fire in garages and in underground parking spaces. Yeah. I never really paid attention to what it was that caused it, but is there some type of belief that these batteries can be dangerous? Uh, larger batteries, yeah. I, I, I Well, I mean, I, I even heard of cell phone batteries, you know, run away, short circuit, basically. And, and lithium gets intensely hot, you know, thousands of degrees. Yeah. Like, it'll burn through, you know, <clears throat> things. Yeah. So I, I, that's I why, that's why they're, so, they're so touchy about it in the air. Yeah. But usually that's when it's in the unit, whatever it's contained to, that the heat Ish, would become an issue when it's in use. That's curious that I'm sure they have reasons behind it. Whatever the reasons are, right? It's like, well, you know, lithium ion that large enough to propel a car, you know, we're talking about a hundred amp hours, you know, these huge batteries, you know, they, if they, one of them runs out of control on a boat, I mean, you're not going to stop it. <laughs> I mean, we've seen the boat sink. Full on car carriers sink with wow. Lamborghinis, and, and because you know, some of the lithium ion uh, went bad somehow. Interesting, yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I don't want to get too far because you know, we, we're doing household goods and and, yeah, and yeah. personal effects, but people when they ship, they t you know, tend to move their tools, and so to, on, even on the ocean, it's, it's important to consider how many batteries you've got that are spare, yeah. Um, and keep them in, into the appliance. And for air, it's a whole different conversation. Absolutely move lithium ion devices by way of air, but it's it's dicier or uh, almost impossible to ship the spare batteries. Yeah, that makes sense. Are, is lithium cheaper here in the United States than let's say Europe? I don't know. I, I don't know if it, I don't, I don't think it is. That yeah. that will all come down to the taxes. Well, where the lithium ion batteries are produced, yeah, um, and they're not really produced here anyway in the United States. I'm thinking sooner or later we were talking about in a previous episode that we found this humongous lithium yeah. deposit. Was it in Nevada or or California or in California? Something? There's a place in California outside Palm Springs, kind of called the Salton Sea. Yeah, and that's it's right. It's like a giant lake that came to be during after a flood in 1940 and never left and yeah. in like the 50s it was going to be the new paradise absolute new paradise on earth um and they started building you know resorts and restaurants and developments around the lake but then the lake started receding <laughs> and really the, then the lake started you know it's all just farmland runoff going into yeah. this lake or sea and so it's polluted there's no fish and it's really acidic from all the runoff or alkaline, one of the two, I can't remember. And so it never became anything. And it's just kind of this, there's a salt and sea, beautiful, huh? But it's yeah. not, but they found the, maybe the biggest, one of the biggest lithium deposits right there. So yeah. as long as we're using lithium ion batteries and who knows, we're using nickel, metal, uh, nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydrides previously and a lot of yeah. acid before that, who knows what's next? <laughs> as long as lithium seems to be the thing, <clears throat> that yeah, it's pretty neat. Maybe yeah. that thing will come back. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Not as a resort, but certainly, you know, it'll be a big factory there. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> 
All right, Rob. So if somebody has questions, they can reach out to you, right? We can put your number on the screen. <clears throat> Absolutely. Reach out to me. I pick up, email me and or, or any one of our very, very experienced relocation specialists. Okay. Anyone can answer these questions and, and based on your circumstance, not your circumstance, a client's circumstance, walk them through, you know, what's going to be necessary so that the, we don't have problems. Cool. All right, Rob, as always, thanks for your time. For those of you watching, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, Jim. See you later, Rob. See ya.